Hello everyone and welcome to Friday Sews. If you'd like to see my three makes for the week, plus a fabulous tip from the Australian Women's Weekly in 1967 on hints for some better sewing, stay tuned. Hello everyone, I'm Deb and this is DB Designs and Sewing Australia. Welcome to all my subscribers and welcome to anyone who's new. And happy Good Friday. It's Good Friday here in Australia today. I'd like to go through my three makes for the week. Now, the first thing I made was the perfect puff sleeve top. And this that's by Matchy Matchy Sewing Club. And that's the first time I've ever used a matchy matchy pattern and it's really quite good. I only printed out the pattern, I didn't print out the instructions, I just used them on my laptop. So I don't have a real picture, but the fabric that I used was the beautiful Van Gogh fabric from the Day of Society bespoke box and the theme was um, Van Gogh so the top has turned out beautiful I will insert photos this fabric is a cotton lawn and it's absolutely ideal for this top because the fact that it's lawn and it has a bit of it's a very soft fabric but it has a bit of stiffness about it the puff is fabulous on it it's quite heavily gathered as you can see, and it's a really beautiful top and I'm so in love with this fabric. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now it's got a bias neck. I put a little tag in there and it's got elastic sleeves and they're a three quarter length sleeve. So really, really useful top, absolutely beautiful. And the fabric's gorgeous, very, very soft. But as I said, it has the ability to puff out, which is what I guess you need from a puff sleeve top. But really, really happy with this. We'll certainly be looking at more of the matchy matchy sewing club patterns because very happy with that. And I made the size M. I do forget to say what size I make. Uh, and people then have to write and ask me, but I made the size M and it fits very, very easily. I mean, it's a loose fitting top, you need to make sure you've got enough room in it depending what size you get and there is a button down the front one but I thought this would um, break up the pattern even less not to have the button up the front one so that was my first make for the week and what I'm wearing is the all-in easy fit shirt by Pattern Emporium and I make a size 14 in this and this one is one of the ones with the camp collar. So it has no collar stand. In hindsight, I really would have liked a collar stand on the black and white check, but um, I actually wear it quite a bit. And with this red necklace and red lipstick for me for once. So my first make was the matchy matchy puff sleeve top. My second make is the Bella dress by Tazuti Fabrics. Boy, is this a gorgeous dress. So this is a fabulous dress pattern. I do like Tazuti patterns. I find they go together very easily. And it has a center back seam. So it actually has more shaping than you think it would have. And it's got a long straight sleeve. I took five centimeters off the sleeve before I cut it out. I measured the length of what the um, sleeve length would be and decided that five centimetres and in the picture, the girl has got those sleeves turned up a bit, I think, but very easy make, very, very nice make. Now this was in some gorgeous um, linen viscose blend from the data society and it's lovely fabric although i do have to say it frays a lot so everything is um overlocked 
and it has some lovely front pockets. I did measure where the pocket was going to be on my body to make sure it wasn't too far down and it wouldn't even be able to reach it with my hands, but it was actually in the right spot. And there's a little bit of top stitching that's done on the pocket. You can see there, it's like a double top stitch, but it only goes to here. It doesn't go all the way around the pocket. And it's really quite effective. I guess it will stop the pocket from stretching down and because there's nothing to attach the top part of the pocket to, so it would just be a loop like that. And in the end, you'd stretch the side of the dress out. So that's a good way of keeping it down without fully stitching it all the way around as a top stitch. Really, really happy with this dress. It has no front darts, but it does have the shaping in the back and then you top stitch the back down. So really lovely dress. And I can see myself making more of those. It'd actually make a nice summer dress in it with a bit of a shorter sleeve. So really happy with that one. Now, the next thing I made was the Vetiver. I'm guessing that's how you say it, V-E-T-I-V-E-R. The Vetiver top from French Navy. I'd never used a French Navy pattern before either. So this is a lovely pattern and I made size F. This is the top and I actually made style A with a little ruffle around the bottom. And their sizing goes from a bust of 82 centimetres, which is 32 inches, up to a bust of 110 centimetres, which is 43 and a quarter inches. So not terribly size inclusive. And I actually made the F, which was for a 102 centimetre bust, which is a 40 inch bust. Now my bust is 104 centimetres, not 102, but it also gives you the finished gar garment measurements, which is great. And the finished garment measurement on the size I made was 110 centimetres. So I knew I still had six centimetres of ease and that's plenty for me. I don't like it too big. And the waist, it's not fitted in the waist and it's not fitted in the hips. So that really wasn't going to be an issue. And this is the top here. So after making the Nerida Hanson remnant top, I was looking around for tops that I could make out of different pieces of fabric I had. Now, this is a remnant that I bought out of, of a um, Atelier Jupe uh, viscose, visco, um, which is an off-white and black print. And I've teamed that with some black tensile linen, just so that it's got some sort of effect. And I only had 50 centimetres of the visco. And so this frill at the bottom is actually all pieced together in about six different pieces just so that I could get it out of it. I really do not have any left of that. But I thought this was a fabulous top to use up all those scraps. I have got a lot of pieces where I've got, you know, 0.8 left, 0.6 left. So I also use these little buttons here. And I think they're called mountain something or by a mountain something. I know that they're from the Dahlia Society. I had intended to put them on some sort of something that was woolen and knitted, but I decided they were a good match for this top. So really, really happy with this top. It's a really sweet little top. It's not too short. Like some tops are just way too short and just show way too much. So really, really happy with that make. I know the other thing I made, I made a new ironing board cover. I'll just show it to you. Now, recently I made a whole new padded ironing board cover and I'd actually made it in 
and I made it in calico and already it was becoming discolored after one week of pressing I guess and steam and all that sort of thing it was already becoming discolored so I thought I need to make a pop over the top cover and I had some bluey fabric anybody in Australia will know who bluey is it's a kids television show and Bluey is actually a girl, the two girls, two sisters. And because that was in a 100% cotton drill, I decided I would make a cover to go over that. Now I make the cover just by measuring the ironing board, cutting to size, oh, with um, probably 10 centimeter edge on it and sew a channel in and put elastic in it and stretch it around so that's my beautiful new bluey ironing board cover and i do i always have lots of drill because i make aprons wouldn't anyone love a beautiful bluey pink apron now the other thing i thought i'd do is every week i would read out a couple of hints for better sewing one of the things I found in my mum's stash and it's from the Australian Women's Weekly on March the 1st 1967 so never fold up a half-made garment squeezing it into a small box instead hang it up pinning vital seams together accurately this will avoid many hours of unnecessary ironing that's, of course, unless it's going to go into your UFO box, really, isn't it? They probably didn't have UFO boxes then because it was probably so non-cost effective. And remembering you didn't have that many clothes then. I was six years old then and we didn't have that many clothes. Even though mum made our clothes... We had school uniforms, we had jeans, and we had hand-knitted jumpers, and we had church clothes. Yeah, and we probably had, probably had a fair few pairs of shorts and tops and my sundresses in summer. Here's another lovely one. Always be adventurous with your sewing doing that little bit more on each dress so that the excitement of achievement stimulates you to even more experiments. Isn't that the truth? Try something new. I think that's what they really mean. Try something new and just go for it. As my mother would say, it's only fabric, just do it. Here's a very good one. Never use unshrunk interlining, hoping that it will be all right. Invariably, it will shrink or twist during making or cleaning. Now, that's true. If you're lining something, you need to pre-wash the lining. And if you are using a heavier type of woven interfacing that is all cotton, which can sometimes be used as interlining, so in an evening dress, you would have your outer layer of fashion fabric and interlining plus the lining. When you make a wedding dress, the bodices, when they're not completely see-through, um, the bodices have an interlining in them. So it's like a double lining in them. Um, it's really important to shrink that as well. Washing it in exactly the same fashion as you would wash. Um, your fashion fabric. So make sure you wash everything that you need to wash. And when I made the Celeste blouse the other day, and it's the one with the hook and eyes, I washed that hook and eye tape too, because that is 100% cotton. So chances are that's going to shrink. Now the fabric, well, even though it was cotton sateen, it does have some type of elastane in it. So it's probably not going to shrink as much as the tape would. So if you didn't shrink the tape, once it's first washed, it's going to look like a buckled up mess. So really important to pre-shrink anything 
that you're applying to the fashion fabric or having on the inside of the fashion fabric. There's nothing worse than interfacing, interlining or lining that ends up smaller than your actual garment. So that was my three tips. There's plenty more where that came from. So next week I will endeavour to bring you some more. What am I making next week? Good question. I think I'll be using some denim next week and certainly be making the Quebec skirt. I really did want to go through that with people. I'll show you those patterns. So if you remember, this is the Quebec skirt. I had a denim one yesterday in all my bottoms. And this is, stay there. And this is the black denim. It doesn't look all that black, but it is a charcoal -y black colour. And it has got a nice bit of stretch in it to make that skirt. So I wanted to go through with you and show you how easy it is to make that skirt. And the top stitching on it will be in this charcoal colour as well. It's actually quite a good match for this skirt. I don't want one with really obvious top stitching because I've already got the blue denim one with the... Oh, what colour do you call that top stitching? Orangey mustard, normal type of... I'm looking down at the jeans I've got on, which are actually my ginger jeans, but they're actually top stitched in a navy, so that's a non-obvious top stitch as well. But that's what I'm going to be doing with the Quebec skirt. And after that, I was going to make, I think I'll make the ginger jeans. And I must make, view a low rise stovepipe leg because sure if I said that yesterday or not I do make the low rise because the low rise actually comes up to my waist so I've got plenty of YKK zips in my stock and I'm going to be using this beautiful fern green stretch denim that I bought from my designs when I was in bright amazing how many more things you buy because you can see them in real life so this is a beautiful denim quite a bit of stretch in this denim so that should make a lovely pair of ginger jeans and I'm not even though I've got a lot of pairs of jeans I and I wear them I guess I'm really a wear jeans every day person and even though I've got lots of pairs of jeans I really love these ginger jeans. You can see that it's well used. Both types have been cut out. I also use from the last stitch. This is a little kit that you can get for free off her website. Um, and it's got different shaped pockets. And it also has things called the zipper template so you can chalk line or draw around that and then do your top stitching so your top stitching is perfect and yeah different shape pockets different sh uh, fly shield anything that you might have you probably have that in your pattern but if you're not necessarily happy with the shape of it or i didn't really know when I made my first pair of jeans, which, how far away I wanted the top stitching to be from the, from the edge of the fly. So what I did was I went and measured a pair of ready-mades that I was happy with and then found a, a top stitching guide 
to match that distance because from all the jeans that are on the market you'll see plenty out there that are just something about them is not that nice and sometimes that's because they're not aesthetically pleasing when it comes to where the top stitching is and even in the cubic skirt hers looks all right but it's quite a wide looking, and it's only it's only a fake fly, it's not a real fly. That looks quite wide, so I might check that against my template when I go to make it. See if I want to make it a little bit narrow. It won't be obvious because it's in um, it's going to be top stitch in in the charcoal coloured thread, same as the fabric. But still, something about it looks really nice when it's in a really aesthetically pleasing place same as when you do hems although i must say on the bella dress it's quite a narrow hem i mean it turns out beautiful and this linen presses up gorgeously um quite a narrow hem i think you turn it up be one centimeter turn it up one centimeter then turn it up another centimeter so um and the sleeves be turned up one centimeter then turned up two centimeters by the look of it but remembering that the sleeves might get rolled up and if you were only going to roll up your sleeves once a hem that is that wide is going to look much nicer than a hem that's really narrow so you might turn it up twice like that but if you're only turning it up once that looks much nicer than a very narrow hem i think on most of my dresses i do a one and a half centimeter hem not a one centimeter hem because I just like the way it looks better. And quite frankly, I'm short. So it's never an issue that the dress is going to be too short. Because I noticed that people had said about the Bella dress, oh, it's quite short. Well, it's below my knees. Oh, yeah. When I look at the chick in the photo, you can only just see it. It's above her knees. so well, it's much longer than that on me. So, um, yeah, I think it comes to the bottom part of my knee. But really, really happy with it. It's a gorgeous dress. I can understand why people have made so many of them. And as I said the other day, I saw a lady in Spotlight and asked her if that's what she had on, and she said yes. Um, and hers was actually in a very similar green as to what is on that uh, pattern cover. That was my Friday sews. Have I got a little bit about life? Well, today is Good Friday, so it's terribly quiet terribly quiet haven't been down and done the stations at the cross at church yet and i'm going to be forcing my husband to have fish for tea that'll be fun so tomorrow we're off to take dad for lunch going to the rsl which is a very very nice place and the staff are just lovely there and when I make the booking and I say now it's three adults and one but one of them's got a walker, they always accommodate you. So it's very, very nice of them. They're very lovely. So I'm looking forward to that. And apparently so is dad. So everybody have a wonderful week. It'll be a short week here in Melbourne because today is Good Friday. Then we've got Easter Saturday, Easter Sunday and Easter Monday is a public holiday. Anyway, enough waffling on. Everybody have a fabulous sewing week. Please like and subscribe and a great big thank you to all of the people who have bought me a coffee through my Kofi account. It is very much appreciated. I really appreciate it. It's really lovely of you. Um, I will talk to you all next week where hopefully I will get time and we can go through that cubic skirt and I'd like to take you through the process of sewing it. It's sewing denim that looks like it's got a fly. It's really a faux fly, for one bit of a word. Um, and so if you've never sewn jeans or a fly, it's a really good one to start on. And then you'll find out that sewing that curve is not that scary. 
And if you've never sewn jeans before and it was the fly that you were worried about and not the pockets, because the pockets are actually quite easy and come together really well. Um, if you sew a denim skirt, even one with a real fly rather than a faux fly, it is much, much easier to insert the fly because you don't have that front curve of the crutch. It's just straight down. Um, I made the uh, Tommy skirt a few months ago in the green denim and um, I was surprised at how much easier it was to do a fly on the straight rather than on the curve. It's much more forgiving, put it that way. So always something to think about. And there are huge amounts of denim patterns out there for denim skirts. Very much on trend now. I think the trend is quite long, split up the front. I do recall a few months ago, I took up my daughter Hannah's skirt because it was so long on her. And I said, you're gonna fall over in that. You're carrying a baby around, you're gonna fall over. So we pinned it up to where she thought she wanted it and I must have cut this much off it. So this is really quite, quite long, far too long if you're walking upstairs at work, that's for sure. So very much on trend, all the young ones have got it. And even some of us are old ducks as well. So something to think about if you've never sewn a fly before that you could start on a skirt because it is considerably easier. I will talk to you all soon. Everybody have a great week. Bye.